we're going to do a little bit more AP review. This is 2009 Form B, A, B, B, C, Free Response 3. Uh, you're given a graph. This is the graph of f of x. So this is f of x. Uh, the graph consists of a line from negative 4 to uh, to x equals 0. Uh, and then it consists of a curve from 0 to x is 6. Uh, and there is a horizontal tangent. Uh, the graph is uh, tangential to the x-axis at x equals 3. And uh, from 0 to 6, f is a twi twice differentiable function with f double prime of x greater than 0, essentially saying it is concave up on this window, which we could see with our eyeballs. Uh, cool. Part A. Is f differentiable at x equals 0? Use the definition of the derivative with one-sided limits to justify your answer. So the answer is definitely that it is not, right? Um, you can see that because it has a point, right? But the reason why is because uh, essentially f prime is positive on this side, right? And then over here f prime is negative. So they ask us to actually show the reasoning why, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to do the two-sided limit. Uh, or the two sides of the limit, rather, the two one-sided limits. So in part A, um, I actually know what f prime is on this side, and I, it can be really specific because I have this point and this point, right? Uh, so I can actually find the slope of this line. So the limit as uh, x approaches 0 from the left, right, uh, of f prime of x is essentially just the slope on this side. Well, this slope has a rise of 2 and a run of 3, so so it equals a 2 thirds, right? It's it, This is a constant slope of 2 thirds, right? On the other side, right, I don't know what this slope is, but I know it's negative. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f prime of x is less than 0, right? This can't be the same as this, so since 2 thirds is not less than 0, they can't possibly be equal, and thus this is not differentiable, right? This is not differentiable because the limit as x approaches 0 from the left-hand side of f prime can't possibly equal the limit as x approaches 0 from the right-hand side of f prime of x, right? That's the definition. It's not differentiable. Cool. Uh, so they specifically wanted you to set up, like, the AP actually gives you credit for setting up this as a difference quotient, which is a choice, I suppose. Uh, they actually wanted you to set it up as the limit as h approaches 0 from the negative of f of h minus f of 0 over h, uh, and show that that is a 2 thirds by doing rise over run the same way I did. Uh, whether they give you credit for understanding the slope and for showing rise over run is, is a question. Uh, I would expect they would, uh, understanding that derivative is the same as slope for something linear, uh, certainly. Anyway, cool. Um, part B. For how many values of a from negative 4, which is included, to 6, which is not, is the average rate of change of f on the interval from a to 6 equal to 0? Give a reason for your answer. Okay, so what they want is on the window uh, from, so for part b, on the window from negative 4 to 6, where the negative 4 is included and the 6 is not, right? Um, for how many a... is the average rate of change uh, from a to 6 um, equal to 0, right? That's what they're asking. So here's the thing. The average rate of change, right? So if we erase this spot here, all average rate of change means is old school slope, right? This is old school slope. And I have a point here that's fixed. So they're saying, if you, how many times would you be able to pick some number such that if you drew a line from that letter A, like the y value at A to the other one, would you get a horizontal slope? Well, here's the thing. If I draw, and I'm going to do a tragic job at this, but if I draw this across, here's one such A, because the average rate of change from A to 6 uh, would be a slope of 0, right? That's old school slope, the slope from A to 6. But here's another one. If I had gone from here to 6, that would be another one. So, so the answer is 2, right? Uh, and the reason that it's 2 is because essentially what we're asking is uh, we want f of 6 minus f of that mystery a over 6 minus a uh, to be 0, 
which is the same as saying you just want f of 6 to equal f of a, which happens twice. Right, and we can see that we wanted f of 6, which is 1. We wanted this thing to equal that f of 6, and it happens exactly two times. Uh, so the answer is twice, and that's your whole answer. All right, part C. Is there a value a from negative 4 included to 6 not included for which the mean value theorem applied to the interval from a to 6 guarantees a value of c such that f prime of c is one third? Justify your answer. Okay, cool. So let me erase all my crazy green lines for a sec. Oh yeah, the green is the one that never erases. Okay, cool. So what they're saying is in part b, sorry, part c, rather, they're saying uh, if you were to do the mean value theorem on the window from uh, from a to six, right? So from a to six, we don't know what a is, right? Right for some a, um, we want to find like is there a window such that f prime of c is a one third, right? So the easiest way to think about this, right, is that you have a fixed uh, you have a fixed point here. You can't change this point, right? This point is included. So if you wanted to make a line that has a slope of one third, right? Because uh, that's what this is, right? This is saying, so this is saying f prime of c, right? Mean value theorem says that f prime of c is equal, so this is the instant slope, right? That this is equal to the old school slope, right? And the old school slope would be f of six minus f of a over 6 minus a. But remember, like, if we're really thinking super old school, like algebra 1 kind of old school, we're really just talking rise over run. So the question is, if you have a rise of 1 and a run of 3, is there any point on this curve that's going to give you that average slope? Well, I can check by going backwards. I can say, okay, well, a slope of 1 third, if I go backwards, would be uh, down 1, left 3. Oh, look, there's a point. Down 1, left 3. Down 1, left 3. Okay, so there this is the line, right? This is my line that has a slope of one third. Sure enough, there is exactly one point that would make that happen, right? Um, so, so this is my line that has a slope of one third and uses the end point that was provided, right? I have to use the end point, that, that six comma one, because notice that it was the A changes. They're asking what's the A value, but they're not giving me the option. It has to end, the interval has to end at six. So there is a point, right? So the answer is, uh, they said, is there a value? And if so, justify your answer. And the answer is yes, uh, A equals three, right? Um, and the easy way to see that is that F of six minus F of three over six minus three would be a one minus zero over a three, which is a one third, right? And you can see that by visual inspection by what I drew. Finally, part D. Uh, the function g is identified as the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt uh, for that entire included window from negative 4 to 6. On what intervals contained in the graph from negative 4 to 6 included is the graph concave of g concave up explain? Okay, so this is one of those times that we're going to make one of those flow charts to talk about the logic they're asking about. So part d gives us some information. They tell us that g of x is the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt, right? And they ask when is g concave up, right? That's what they ask for on the window from negative 4 to 6. Okay, so we need the relationship between uh, g and f first. So g prime of x is just going to be f of x, right? Based on that second fundamental theorem of calculus, if you derive, right? So if I wanted to derive both of these, right? These are going to cancel, and I'm just going to plug this guy in times the derivative of x, which is how I get f of x times 1, minus f of 0 times the derivative of 0, which is gone. So I now get that this is my first derivative. g prime of x is f of x. That means g double prime of x equals f prime of x. All right, so this is the piece of information we need. Let's make our flowchart. So when we make our flowchart of stuff, we start with what they ask. They ask, when is g concave up? Right? So that's, you just, tra you don't translate anything, you just copied what they asked. Then you need to translate some stuff into what that means by definition. The definition of g being concave up is that g double prime is greater than zero, right? So that's the next thing that goes on your flowchart. Now, you need to relate that to the given problem. Well, since g double prime of x is the same as f prime, I can now relate that to the other info I have and say, oh, I want when f prime is greater than zero, 
right? So, and then here's the big leap, right? So that's that's the first leap, right? That's leap number one. The big leap, leap number two, is how can what can you see with your eyeballs, right? That's that's the big leap. What can you see by observation? So, uh, by observation, I can see that what that means is the graph I'm given is f. That would mean that f is increasing. Or if it makes it easier to think about it, f has a positive slope, right? Whichever way is easier for your brain to quantify that. So, uh, and that's the given graph. That's the important piece of information because now I'm linking it to what I can see with my eyeballs, right? So I go back and I look at my graph and I'm gonna use red because I've used like every other color. f has a positive slope here, right? And f has a positive slope here. So my answer, right, which I'm gonna probably do up here because I'm a little slow on space, uh, my answer, is going to be because they gave me the included window, I'm going to include negative four and go until x is zero, right? Uh, but the slope is actually not positive at zero, right? And I'm going to go from, uh, again, the slope isn't positive right here. The slope is zero here, right? A uh, slope is undefined here, right? It does not exist, right? Um, the, the slope here, right? Uh, would be zero, which is not negative, or which is not positive. So I'm going to go ahead and say that we don't include three, right? And then the slope at six actually is still positive, so I'm going to put a bracket. So that's my answer. The other way you might see it is a negative four is less than or equal to x, which is less than zero, uh, and three is less than x, which is less than or equal to six. Now I'm going to go ahead and say that the AP does not include the negative four and the six. Uh, I disagree with them on this point. You can take it up with uh, the AP, I guess. But uh, they don't include the negative 4 and the 6. I would argue that negative 4 is included because they asked you specifically on the closed interval uh, and because this graph absolutely has a positive slope at this endpoint and at that endpoint.